Hey Instagram, I wanted to share a quick little bit of insight of some things that I've been looking at and thinking about. Uh, first of all, we are in a recession. Uh, that'll probably be officially announced in next month in July. Uh, the Fed just raised rates 75 bips or 0.75%. Um, you know, interest rates are going up. They're trying to get inflation under control. However, the Fed is um, does not have boots on the ground experience. They're not seeing what is going on. So they're just reacting to the data that they have. 50% of those inflationary numbers are based on energy cost. Uh, I believe that is quite a bit politically driven as a challenge against the oil and gas as they're trying to move to more some climate change initiatives. They can turn those things off. However, the Fed has uh, decided they wanna strangle out the inflation by raising interest rates 75 bips, and there's even talks that they're gonna to continue to do that uh, for the remainder of the year. I don't think that's likely. Uh, part of it being is I'm looking at a lot of forward-looking uh, indices, uh, rail car shipping, uh, consumer spending uh, debt, uh, spending at uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, furniture, used cars, all of those things are trending down. And so that actually means that we are seeing a, a dip and we're not seeing inflation anymore. Um, if the prices are at a new high and stay there or go down, then we've gotten inflation under control. So what does that mean for the real estate market? That's what a lot of people that I have are friends, uh, investors, people are looking at is because we're in a recession, does that mean the real estate market's going to crash? I actually don't think so. There has been a lot of overheating of the real estate market, kind of getting a little frothy out there, so to speak. Uh, and let me give you an example of that. Uh, a house that would be listed for you know $620,000 in California uh, has multiple, multiple bids on it and it would sell for $660,000 and getting maybe 20, 30 uh, offers over the weekend. That's not normal. That house actually, in reality, was probably only worth $575,000 if you look at where market comps are. However, the market was there. The people were buying it. You had multiple offers, so you can't fault the people and the sellers for trying to take advantage of that. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna see some pricing correction. That house that's worth 575 that's listed at 620 is not gonna sell. It's gonna have to come down in price and you're gonna have listings and things start picking up as far as the inventory of housing. That house will still sell. A normal market is that you would list something on the market and it would take 30 to 60 days until you actually got an offer. And then you'd have a 30 to 45 day escrow. So what we've been experiencing over the last 12 months of the overheating and frothiness of the market is not normal. So that stuff is gonna go away. You're not gonna see frenzied activity purchasing, you're gonna have a little bit more caution to the people that are buying, especially with those interest rates being so much higher. How does that relate to multifamily or commercial investing? Is we're seeing the same thing. Interest rates are very much affecting those purchase prices. I also believe there's a lot of froth in those markets over the last year as people were just trying to place capital and get into an uh, inflating and appreciating asset. So all of those things are gonna slow down we're gonna go back to normal pricing. And what that means on a multifamily or a commercial deal is something that was traditionally like a six cap or 6% cap rate of a class B tertiary uh, apartment complex. We'll go back to those. And those are because it's based on actual financials, this year's financials, and uh, not some speculative low interest rate environment forever with double digit rent growth. I see fundamentally we have a lack of housing and a lack of supply across the board. Uh, we have not been able to build the amount of product that we are normally using or consuming as a country. Consumer sentiment is gonna be down. Consumer sentiment is oftentimes 50% of what's going on in the market. It's not all about the fundamentals of us missing 4 million houses or undersupplying uh, the market overall. So there's little dips. So that's what I expect in the real estate market is things to flatten out um, or 
normalize. And that's actually gonna lead to some price reductions and some inventory building up, and that's just more to the normal. However, I got bad news for those people in the stock market, the equities, bonds, crypto, NFTs, anything as far as those financial and digital assets. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, your stock of, of Apple is a digital asset, but the investing in the equities world, I feel like because of those forward in uh, looking indices, we're going to see a market correction of another 20% in the stock market, the um, crypto uh, and everything else uh, related to that, you know, side of the world, because you know, they're really driven off of these earnings reports and they haven't come in yet. So as I'm looking at some of these forward looking um, consumer spending, it's not there. It's not happening. It's flattened out. It's going to go down. So in next quarter, Q3, we're going to see companies missing their projected profits, missing or recalculating what their earnings are going to be for the remainder of this year and next year, that's going to also lead to a decline in value. And so I could see, you know, again, maybe potentially 20% pullback in the stock market. So be prepared. Those that are investing, uh, investing in stocks, maybe they go on sell in a relatively short time period. Real estate, if it's cash flowing and it works for your long-term plan, I think it's still a buy. Um, you can actually maybe uh, buy things at about a 10 to 20% discount from the froth. However, it's going to reset to this fundamental level. So happy investing. Cheers guys.